True Dog, the history of dog food. Dogs have been man's best friend for over 2,000 years. These natural companions have worked their way from farms and fields into their owners' hearts and homes, trading in wild scavenging for tame table scraps. But what did we feed dogs in the days before cans and kibble? Mostly, dogs ate what we ate, along with whatever raw prey they found outside. Medieval royal hounds lived in posh kennels and were fed stews complete with the lungs, livers, and hearts of various animals, plus grains and vegetables. They ate like kings. At this time, it was difficult to feed yourself, let alone a pet. Domesticated dogs became a symbol of status, and the lower class started repurposing horse meat to sell as dog food to wealthy dog owners. As dogs became part of the family, owners began paying more attention to dog food and pet health became a priority. In 1895, veterinary medicine was officially founded in the United States. This brought some self-proclaimed experts into the public eye, claiming that only uncivilized dogs would eat raw meat. This mentality gained strength just as alternatives became available. James Spratt launched a brilliant marketing campaign for his baked dog biscuits. The convenience of tasty biscuits with a long shelf life was an instant success. Others followed in Spratt's footsteps, mass producing cheap and easy pet food for the commercial market. By 1930, canned pet food became the most popular option on the shelves. Made of horse meat, carefully marketed as lean red meat, canned food was stamped with a seal of government approval and by 1941, producers were breeding horses just for dog food. That was until December of 1941, when the U.S. entered World War II. Strict rations on tin forced the pet food industry to get creative. Borrowing from another food trend, cereal, where ingredients are pushed through a tube, cooked under high pressure, then puffed up with air, keeping them crisp. Purina's pet food division borrowed an extruder from the cereal division and experimented with it in secret. The result? Dog chow. Dogs loved the crunch, it seemed to digest well, and quickly became the number one dog food in the nation. Though World War II was over, the aggressive marketing war on raw meat had just begun. Lobbyists launched a series of ad campaigns to convince consumers that commercially prepared dog food was their only option. Some sponsored reports even talked about the dangers of table scraps and feeding the dogs raw meat. The marketing campaign triumphed at crowning Kibble the King. Today, manufactured dog food is a huge part of the $29 billion pet food industry. That industry is still growing. But what's happening to our dog's health? We're seeing what the convenient modern diet is doing to humans. What effects are GMO corn, wheat, soy, and non-digestible fillers having on our dogs? The concept of kibble has only been around for less than 89 years, and yet the benefits of raw meat are backed up by science and history. If you line up the results of the pet food industry and dog health and wellness side by side, you can't help but wonder if we were feeding our dogs the right way before history took its toll. Luckily, the dog lovers at True Pet paid attention to the past and are leading the future of dog food back to health by returning raw meat to your dog's diet. Nutrient and convenient. What a great time to be a dog.